Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Uh, <clears throat> Jaleel Hackett um, wins a unanimous decision. Kind of hard fought at the end of the day after 10 rounds. Um, this was over um, Peter Dobson, who you probably remember from fighting Conor Ben. Uh, that was the only defeat on his record. Um, and in fact, it was his last fight back in uh, February of this year. Um, he lost unanimously against... Ben, I think that was over 12 rounds, not 10, if I remember rightly. But he didn't win many rounds, but he did come on strong. And <clears throat> the thing about Dobson in that fight was that he revealed that there were several things that were noticeable about him. One, he was very slow. <laughs> he really wasn't very fast at all with the feet or the hands. But two, he liked to punch through, he liked to, or he liked, he liked to punch through the offense of opponents. So he'd punch between their punches. And number three, he had a good, a good chin and good engine. Um, and it kind of proved to be the case in this 10-rounder with Hackett, because Jamil Hackett's 21 years old, so he's 13 years younger than Dobson. Um, and as with Ben, he started very, very quick, Hackett did. Um, Dobson was trying to – he was threading a few punches through, like I say, through the offense, and he did catch in the opening round. He caught Hackett with a couple of decent punches um, just to make Hackett sort of think, OK, I need to be – I need a bit. Need to be a bit more crafty because one, the one thing that Dobson is is crafty. He's a. He's got that those sort of veteran moves. He's not quick. He's not necessarily particularly athletic, but he does have pretty good technique, um, and he knows how to pace himself, and he takes a good wallop as well. And it looked like Hackett was just as if you think back to the Ben fight. It did look like Ben was going to grind out. Uh, a stoppage win over Dobson, and it certainly looked like that after about five rounds with uh, with Hackett. But gradually, Dobson came back into it. And in fact, Dobson was hurt to the body a few times. He took those body punches well, very well. And I think between the fourth or the fifth, or the, maybe the fifth and the sixth, the referee came over and said, are you all right? And Dobson's corner were like, yeah, well, he's fine, he's fine. And Dobson didn't really say anything. He was trying to, I think, recover from, not blinking and recovering from... Uh, from being stung in that round and from having the wind taken out of him with the body punches. Hackett showed a lot offensively, but a little bit naive defensively. Um, Dobson was able to be quite crafty and land some some counters, and they were individual punches. Dobson didn't really throw any combinations until maybe the eighth round, ninth round. That's when he really did come on strong. Um by this point, he had a really nasty swelling on the side of his left hand side of his head, uh, and it looked—it's oh, ugly. Those things always go through me when you get those sort of swellings that are on the forehead. And you know, the famous one was the Hussein Rockman one, which he had, where he had—I think it was against uh, Van der Holyfield. He had this huge wedge swelling, like a wedge sticking out of his forehead. It looked absolutely horrendous, and um, this wasn't anywhere near that bad. But it still you know, got your attention. You were looking at it thinking, I hope the doctor's keeping an eye on that. But having said that, um, eventually, to, I mean, towards the end, the last three rounds, I thought, when I had this 97-93, so seven rounds to three for uh, Hackett, um, and two of those, at least two of those rounds were in the last three rounds for Dobson. He was beginning to fire combinations. He was beginning to get to Hackett. And it would have been interesting to see if this was a 12-rounder what Hackett could have done, because if you look at Hackett's record, he's fought, he previously he'd fought absolutely no one. He'd beaten a guy called Adrian Gutierrez, who had a 12-1-1 record, stopped him in three rounds. Uh, that was the back end of last year, December. But prior to that, his, I mean, he'd losing records all round, you know, um, very, very poor opposition. And in actual fact, he hadn't been beyond four rounds. So I was supposed to say that he went 10 against a really tough, durable guy, is definitely a feather in his cap. I mean, he's nine wins with seven KOs now, Hackett. No draws, no defeats. But this this had learning fight written all over it. And he did. You know, there were far, far more positives for Hackett in this fight than there were negatives. For Dobson, he might look back on this fight and think, you know, maybe if I got my skates on sooner, just like, just like with the Ben fight, um, I could have won this fight. But at the same time, you think about it and you think, the guy, he's not fast. When he's in against a much younger man who's got all that youthful energy and really is 
threading punches through combinations through not just individual punches and is so much quicker and has all that you know far more athletic as well Hackett than, than Dobson um, maybe it's easier said than done to start quicker but um, it did end up as a unanimous decision for Hackett I think uh, I think he needs a few more of these 10 rounders you know against against a sort of Dobson type opponent Dobson sort of reminds me a little bit of a um of a welterweight version of Jermaine Franklin, you know, the heavyweight who fought Dillian White and AJ back to back, tough guy, durable, not much of a punch, um, good chin, good engine, you know, we'll, we'll, a, a good gatekeeper type, you know what I mean? If Only the very best will will, will beat him. Uh, and I think it's a good win for Hackett, I do. Um, Dobson, I mean, he's 34, so where he goes from here, I don't really know, but he, he might make a living as a gatekeeper. Hack it at 21, all the time in the world, has to live the life. But we need more 10-rounders, more rounds under the belt. Another two two 10-rounders and then move them up to 12, maybe for one of those alphabet soup trinkets. Um, but don't rush this kid. He's got a lot to learn, especially defensively. He was a little bit slack defensively, a little bit too offensive-minded. The art of boxing, of course, being locking in defence with offence so that you're always ready to, when you're not throwing punches, you're defensively on point and then when you are throwing punches immediately your hands are coming back uh, to you know to a defensive stance to cover yourself and your feet as well move your feet again Hackett showed good footwork very good footwork Um, but yeah plenty to work with but plenty more to learn I would say so what did you think of um, Jalil Hackett not did I call him Jamil it's Jalil Hackett J-A-L-I-L Hackett uh where do you think he's going? Do you like what you see? What do you think he needs to learn? Give me all your opinions below as normal. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing and hit that like button as well if you don't mind. It costs you nothing and it helps out the channel. Uh, I always appreciate your time. Looking forward to reading what you've got to say and I'll get you later. Bye for now.